This is K.M. Wyland, and you're listening to the 101st episode of the Wordplay Podcast. I have to admit I didn't accomplish a whole whopping lot on the writing front this week. I started in on my 50-page edit of The Deepest Breath rewrite, then took some time off to tackle some spring cleaning that's long overdue. Like, two years overdue. So after blowing through all the necessary dusting, sweeping, and throwing away of I can't believe I still have this junk, I'm feeling like a Peterbilt truck ran me over and I'm more than ready to return to my comfy editing chair, with a piece of chocolate in one hand and my red pen in the other. In other news, my blog now has a brand new look. We've still some bugs to work out, but I'd love your opinions and particularly your suggestions on how we can tweak it to best serve your needs. Take a look at wordplay-kmyland, that's W-E-I-L-A-N-D dot blogspot dot com. Introduce important POVs as soon as possible. The latest post in the video series on my blog explains why introducing POV characters early in the book is important to your reader's happiness. You can watch the video on my blog. New videos are posted every Wednesday. Meanwhile, enjoy this week's podcast. Four tricks for picking the perfect word. Ironically, since words are our stock and trade, we're often pretty casual in our selection of them. One of Charles Schultz's incisive Snoopy at the typewriter strips from his Peanuts cartoon features poor old Snoopy laboring away, sweating, and smacking himself in the forehead. Finally, he turns to his typewriter and types out, The. With a lofty look, he explains, a good writer will sometimes search hours for just the right word. At times, that search feels like groping in the dark. How do we know which word is the right word? Ultimately, of course, the answer depends upon you as the author, and the demands of whatever sentence you're writing. There's no such thing as the right word. There are just good words appropriately used. Today, let's explore four sophisticated linguistic techniques for choosing and using those words in a way that won't cost you all the sweat and labor our pal Snoopers had to endure. Alliteration. What is it? Repetition of beginning consonant sounds. How is it used? I used alliteration in the title of the post, Four Tricks for Picking the Perfect Word. I could have said Four Tricks for Choosing the Perfect Word, or Four Tricks for Picking the Right Word. Both choices would have been more than sufficient, but neither would have given me the pleasing phonetic significance of the alliterative P's in picking and perfect. Remember, alliteration doesn't demand words beginning with the same letter, just the same sound. For example, Kara kept the chimera at bay. Assonance. What is it? Repetition of vowel sounds. How is it used? The post title contains assonance in the is sounds of its rhyming words, for tricks for picking the perfect word. But assonance can be just as powerful, sometimes more so, in non-rhyming words. For example, the red heifer looked left as I set down the lemonade for the referee. Consonance. What is it? Repetition of internal consonant sounds. How is it used? Again, we find an example in the post title, this time in the k sounds, four tricks for picking the perfect word. But the possibilities aren't limited to rhymes. We can use the technique to gain a more subtle, and often subconscious, effect through non-rhyming words. For example, suspicious as ever, the assassin sussed out the mafia boss's safe house. Onomatopoeia. What is it? Representation of sound through phonetic imitation. How is it used? I have to fess up to my inability to find a suitable use of onomatopoeia for the post title. Kablooey, snap, and meow just didn't quite fit in. This technique can easily become overbearing if used incorrectly. The wham, pow, holy barking dogs Batman approach of comic books isn't often appropriate in written fiction. However, when used with a little more restraint, the accessible power of onomatopoeic words can infuse sizzle in your prose. For example, Whapping its wings against the cage, the parrot squawked at the annoying cackling of its neighbor, a magpie. These four simple techniques can instantly raise your writing to a new level of effectiveness. For all their subtle power, they're easy to implement, and they offer some fun and original solutions to Snoopy's agonized hours of word searching. Thank you for listening to the Wordplay Podcast. To read a transcript of this episode, visit me on the web at wordplay-kmyland, that's w-e-i-l-a-n-d, dot blogspot.com, and be sure to listen again next week. Mm-hmm.